In the words of political philosopher Whitney Houston, I believe the children are our future. Teach them well and let them lead the way. I think um, the question is what kind of world are we going to leave uh, the children and how are they going to feel uh, about the world that they have been left, connecting to the discussions about population scarcity in previous videos, um, as well as opportunity costs that we've seen going back all the way to week two. I think the Utes are uh, often seen as one of the largest challenges for governments to be able to provide for them and to provide them incentives to not uh, use violence. And in the aftermath of several shocks, both in developed and developing countries that I've seen over the last couple of decades, there really has been um, noticeable differences with the changing of generations and who is, uh, what the perspective that each generation has in the world that they live in. I think for me in growing up before, um, before the end of the Cold War, at least starting to, as well as before 9-11, the understanding that I was raised with about the role of governments, the role of ideology, uh, nationalism, economic opportunity is different than those that have uh, had lived experiences in the aftermath of the 98 financial crisis and the, the tech com uh, bubble after 9-11, the financial crisis in 2007 and 2008 that different generations have different lived experiences that can provide both opportunities and, and challenges. I think Germany's response to Russia's invasion of Ukraine, the willingness to send weapons, as well as to be more proactive in the face of uh, aggression is something that is different than leaders from two or three decades would have responded to it. And I think with Occupy Wall Street, which now happened when all of you guys were in like year one or year two, was this f huge groundswell movement by people who were in their teens and early 20s to respond to what they saw as an unfair alloca uh, allocation of the resource pie within the United States and similar projects around the world. Now it, now we don't really see a similar kind of gen uh, generational um, targeting of uh, elites by those that feel marginalized from them in a, a similar kind of way. All those camps on Wall Street were sw uh, swept away over a decade ago now, and I think by and large, people have been less focused on political change than just on uh, individual um, self-interest or survival. The youth also plays roles in a bunch of other contexts, like here in in Kathmandu in Nepal, in which you had a civil war that lasted uh, the better part of a decade from, from the 90s until uh, 2006. And now you have new generations of people that have ideological affinity to Marxism that wasn't near what that were deck their parents probably weren't even born during the Cultural Revolution of the Great Leap Forward that have a different perception of the ideological relevance of Maoist thought or, or communist thought or the role of society and I think it's really notable to the extent to which the new generations can remix take lessons from different eras or from different um context and be able to to create their own kind of reality. I think one thing that does kind of uh, transcend those kind of uh, eras and and um, and uh, focus on different ideological approaches is the propensity to use violence is definitely one that's clustered by age. This is a graph from um, from an article from 2013 looking at uh, homicides in Australia by age group. And one of the takeaways here, as I see in red, is that the vast majority of people who are um, murdering other people are men and disproportionately likely to be those that are that are relatively uh, young. You don't see that many s senior citizen murders, though. You do see, what, 12, um, 12 men and, and three uh, women. Uh, doing that over 65, so it definitely still happens. But I think one of the main trends you see in developing countries and uh, developed countries as well, like in Australia, is that certain people are more likely 
uh, systematically more likely to use violence, and those that are both young and unemployed are also seen as um, being additionally, uh, having that interactive effect between being both young and unemployed has that additional kind of effect. And you see here in this graph from the same report that um, the, un un the unemployed are much more likely to, 20% um, more likely for the 18 to 24 age group to to use violence than than the uh, than the employed, this that gap kind of narrows once you get over thirty five, but it still is there for the twenty five to thirty four uh, age group. And I think one of this kind of consistent finding, people can hypothesize about risk tolerance for for younger males, um, other kind of sociological or, or cultural different norms. Others like uh, Collier and Hoffler from week two would talk about an opportunity cost uh, argument as well. But given these kind of patterns of behavior that we see in a whole bunch of different countries, I think the the nature of those population pyramids that I talked about earlier can have an effect on on the um, the supply uh, of violence as potentially uh, as well as the demand. Here you see a world map of the median age of different countries around the world, and you see a huge regional difference between um, Europe, North America, uh, Russia, and uh, in areas in Sub-Saharan Africa in which you have a dramatically younger population. There you do also see that in, uh, in Honduras, uh, Bolivia, and elsewhere. Um, so there is a lot of regional distribution. Just looking at the median age, the median age in Australia is a little over 38 years old. We looked at that population pyramid earlier, right? In Rwanda, the median age is 18. Uganda, it's 15. In Gaza Strip, it's also 15. While in Japan, we saw that, that um, pyramid earlier is 46. So this distribution in the average age um, connects us to what effect that might have on on violence and what is it about these youth bulges that are more dangerous i think the the erdahl piece for this week it's a bit dated now and i think the research interests on these kind of youth characteristics have waned in recent years but i think in talking about population issues it is something that everyone kind of points to this article and says it's important but then interacts it with other factors that matter more directly to uh, to them. So Erdahl talks about both motive and opportunity, but say they have the same empirical implications. He has a number of different hypotheses. The first one is that kind of direct effect of the size of the youth cohort has a direct effect, um, and then other interactive factors like demographic uh, dividends, should decrease the the likelihood of violence that's that is when you have um a uh, a smaller cohort of uh, older people people to take uh to take care of and so those additional benefits will come uh to the state economic growth also has a negative effect higher education actually increases uh the, that interactive effect with bulge leading to violence which they hypothesize is related more towards um understanding uh, the relative difference within within the state. Urbanization is also dangerous, which we're going to talk about in a second, and autocracy, uh, youth bulges in autocracy. Um, Homer Dixon also suggests that, uh, he might suggest that structural scarcity um, could be due to unequal distribution of these resources between different groups. But I think the takeaways is that there is mixed kind of results for the aggregate level effect on on conflict um, and whether that would still hold looking at it 15 years afterwards. That would be an opportunity for an honors thesis or a dissertation to look at right now. But I think the takeaway is that uh, the literature suggests that youth bulges and the population cohort in which my students are in are seen as those that are at the uh, highest risk of playing a role in conflict around the world. But of course, not all of this conflict is is uh, in the same area, right? This this is from Coachella. I'm not sure if it's if it's back this year, if it's if it's virtual, um, but you're less likely to see violence in certain groups and in certain parts of the world than you are in others, which leads me to the discussion of urbanization. And we'll go ahead and turn to that now.